So the judge is about to be introduced now for the Hound Group. over 50 years ago and awarded CCs in the breed in 1979. We'll see him appear in just a moment. The ring commentator is just filling the audience in and a little bit of background about him. And when we see him, I will tell you all about him. But we're looking at the Hound Group. There were 3,000, just short of 3,000 hounds taking part in competition today. Magnificent breeds. And uh, I know that you're going to enjoy this, and I hope that you've been enjoying the full YouTube streaming that we've had on the from Crufts 2017. And uh, as we greet, accompanied by Anne McDonald into the ring, we have our judge for the Hound Group. Here he is, Mr. Graham Hill. And Graham, his, uh, his breed, his first breed was the uh, Vorzoi. More recently, he said he's fallen in love with his constant companion, which is a whippet. Well, he's going to see some beautiful hounds in here today, and we'll see what he makes of them in just a minute. But thank you very much to Anne MacDonald. And before we see the best of breeds come in, we'll see the winner of the import register. That's, that's classes for breeds which have not got a big population yet, just being recognized. And here we have the Griffon, the Griffon Vaudien, a taller breed. Red coated, we'll see the, the Basset Fauve later. This is the Griffon, the Griffon Fauve. Um, athletic, beautiful, noble head, and of course the stern of the hound carried aloft. A lap of honour there. So we make no mistake as we see the hounds come in. The first one, the magnificent the Afghan Hound. hound. And there's this swinging stride of the Basenji, red and white. The Basset Fauve de Britannia. And the Basset Fauve de Britannia. The Grand Basset Griffon Vendien. One of the biggest of the Basset varieties, the, the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien. The Petit Basset Griffon Vendien. And the small version of that, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendien. The Basset Hound. And the one best known to us all, the Basset Hound. The Beagle. And followed in by, almost as familiar, I would say, the Beagle. The Bloodhound. Unmistakable. Here comes the Bloodhound, a black and tan, athletic gait. The Borzoi. And the Borzoi. Mr. Hill's breed, the his Chineco first breed. The Chineco Deletna. And from Sicily, the Chineco Deletna. Elegant. The long-haired Dachshunds. The first of six Dachshunds. This is the long-haired variety, the standard size. The miniature long-haired Dachshunds. Now the same in a miniature version, the miniature long-haired following on. The smooth-haired Dachshund. And this is the standard smooth Dachshund. The miniature smooth-haired Dachshund. And again, we have the miniature variety again for the smooth. It's another red one. The wire-haired Dachshund. And my favourite of them all, the wire-haired Dachshund, the standard. This one a big winner. Wirehead, and finally, the little miniature wire. Great characters. Six varieties of Dachshund in the group. The Deerhound. And followed in by this loping, striding Deerhound. The Finnish Elegance. Spitz. And the Finnish Spitz. National breed of Finland. The Foxhound. And the Foxhound. The Greyhound. Now the elegance of the Greyhound, patriarch of many of the sighthounds. The Hamilton Stervera. This is the Hamilton, well, Stervera was how it was described there, and this is uh, the Swedish Foxhound, really. The Ibethan Hound. The distinctive hovering gait of the Ibethan Hound. The Irish Wolfhound. And the biggest dog in the group, 
the Irish Wolfhounds, tallest and biggest of the hounds. The Norwegian Elkhounds. Here comes the Norwegian Elkhound, distinctive grey, shaded coat. The Otterhounds. Vulnerable breed here, the Otterhound. The Pharaoh Hound. Again, the Pharaoh Hound. Distinctive head and ears and full of energy coming in. The Portuguese Podengo. And the little Portuguese Podengo. The Rhodesian Ridgeback. The athletic stride of the Rhodesian Ridgeback. The Saluki. And the graceful dignity of the Saluki. Another big winner here. The Slugi. The Slugi from Africa, one of the African breeds from North Africa. And finally, to complete the hound group, the Whippets. And the Whippet. Those are our hounds. That's what Mr. Hill I shall now is going to have to, to judge. I shall now in him in to take you through the judging of this hound group. Thank you so very much, Marina. It's absolutely lovely taking his first look round here taking in the outline of the dogs often the indicator of breed type and balance of course he gets a good look at each one as they come in so he's already developing an idea of where he may be looking rich diversity of breeds. The sight hounds, which are the longer limbed and were often used for hunting, are accompanied by um, riders. The lower to ground dogs, the scent hounds, they're hunted by scent and they could be followed by foot and often were used for going to ground. Some of the movements are really extraordinary when you look at the, the way that something like a deer hound moves and it just lopes across the ground. Many of the longer legged sight hounds have this elegance and lightness of foot. Yeah, it's lovely to watch, isn't it? And the first dog we're going to judge this evening is the African. Judged today by Wendell Moore. The choice for best of breed was this dog, number 2418. Always first of the hounds to be judged, the Afghan hound. This is a three-year-old dog called Sonny. It's come from Bristol uh, today. And uh, the Afghan, it's really the, the glamour puss of the show ring. A silky coat, the great attraction, really, of the breed. But to those in the show ring, they look that way because someone spent a lot of time getting them there. And they're, although you say they're glamorous, they also have to be fit to do a day's work. Hunting on the plains or the rocky uh, mountains of Afghanistan. It's thought that the coat was developed for the breeds, that, for the dogs which hunted in the higher altitude and gave them protection against the cold. Yes. Driving hindquarters there, they move round the ring. It's a lovely movement to watch. And they should have a light, a light lift to their movement, and this ring to the tail, this little donut ring to the tail, and this light lift in its front movement. And Graham uh, Hill sending them round again, just to get a better look, but he's now turned back to the table. Ah, and there we have the distinctive head and ears of the Basenji. There's neat hooded ears. The Basenji comes from the Congo, and it should resemble a, a gazelle. This elegance, legginess, this tightly ringed tail, and again, this work on its forehead, look, giving a frowning expression. This is a 14-month-old bitch called... Uh, Empress Nina, nice name there, and uh, they've come from Lincolnshire to take part today. 
and the breed goes with this swinging stride, this lovely movement and carriage, very typical of the breed. They've got a pliant skin, this lovely rich colour, beautiful carriage there, putting on a nice show. They're not they, even called the barkless dog, but they're not mute, are they? They yodel, actually, yes. <laughs> and they hunt by both scent and sight. There were 87 of them here today, and Mrs P. Barley selected this one to come through into the group. Very nice, very nice shots. Clean in its action, very smart white markings, which are permitted. Full of quality and full of breed type. And this is the Basset Fauve de Bretagne. This is a three-year-old bitch called Ginger and is owned by Mrs. Debbie and Miss Rebecca Elric. And the, uh, this particular one has come to uh, Crofts today to compete against all the others. The word basset describes the breed. They are bas in France. In French means low. They're all low to ground, so they could be followed on foot. The basset fauve developed in, in Brittany, and we come in this fawn colour, That's the and it's a harsh, protective coat. They could work singly or in small packs. Uh, Say so it's a dog which is suitable for small house and garden, although he's very lively and friendly, but there's a nice handy side for but a, a house But a, a keen sense of smell and a, a de deeply rooted hunting instinct and full of activity and confidence here. And there, round she goes. I went to the uh, French hunting centre in Chantilly to see these working, a display of all of the hunting breeds there. So a great, a great experience. And here is something larger, the tallest of the Basset varieties, the Grand Basset Griffin Vendien. And this one, a big winner. This is the tallest, everything on long lines. This long head, a long neck, a long body, fairly tall on the leg for a Basset, and this harsh protective coat. This is a two-year-old uh, dog, in fact, called Frosty, owned by Phil Reed and uh, Gwen Huixhoven. I've got to get that right. Uh, from both Oxford and the Netherlands. And uh, Gwen is actually handling there in the ring. And this is a very successful um, kennel from the Netherlands in both the, the Grand and the Petit. And this one, a beautiful specimen. Quite a young dog, but full of quality. Again, that harsh protective coat, the tail, held aloft like the, the hounds do, and a noble head. The Grand Basset, above all, has to have this nobility in its head, like a lot of the French hounds, and this keen, clean action. A wonderful expression, and this big nostrils to give it scenting power. Smaller version here, this is the Petit Basset, Griffin Vendion. And this is a 20-month-old 20 20 dog called Mike. And the handler there is uh, Sarah Robertson, one of the uh, co-owners. They come from Wallingford in Oxfordshire. Best in show in Belfast last year and over, uh, overall winner of the Ukanuba Champion and Puppy Stakes last year as well. Now, this is a remarkable dog. He was um, top... Um, puppy in, in the country last year and also won the contest of champions on the same day. The only time that that's been done. He's bred to win. His mother was best in show at Crufts a few years ago, the famous Jilly. His father's a best in show winner. And here we have a dog which is young, but already has a great track record. He's a best in show winner. So he's got a lot of form on him and uh, uh, going well here. The Petit Basset is built on more moderate lines. It's a medium length of back, medium length of head. So it's less exaggerated, perhaps, than the Grand Basset. Uh, everything of moderate proportions. Great character and great movement. And it wasn't this breed uh, best in show here a couple of years ago.
and now we have the Basset Hound. It's come from a big entry today, and this one is another which has come from the Netherlands, the Basset Hound, originally bred by the French monks, and uh, one of the French hounds with this nobility about them, the long ears which encase the scent, this clean head, strong bone, and flexibility in the skin, which the judge is looking at there. Yes, depicted by cartoonists the world over as a bit of a twerp, isn't it, the, the Basset Hound? But it's not by any means. And uh, they're really popular as family dogs, happy to be by the fireside or out on the moors. And Both things suited. And although they're low to ground and substantial, they should have good ground clearance to give them athleticism. And though they've got a slight elasticity in the skin, it shouldn't be overdone. We don't want any exaggeration in skin, wrinkle, or indeed in heaviness of the body. They have to be athletic too. This one, a tan and white, and a very nice top line, that wagging stern, strong bone as we see, and strong feet, very important and as for well a hunting as all, hound. As well as all the distinctive appearance, a very distinctive voice. So here we come with the beagle. This is a 16-month-old dog called Peter, owned uh, by Miss Melanie Spavin from just around the corner in Solihull. He's a bit of a clown, according to Melanie. A fun dog to be around. He just loves life. I think a lot of dogs can be said to be that, but you can see that it's in a the very, look. It's a very smart dog, absolutely unexaggerated, workmanlike, with a soft expression. Smart as paint. Well, the dial in uh, kennel is, I was going to say notorious, but absolutely famous uh, for, and, and had tremendous success over the years. This is a breed which was developed in the United Kingdom and it goes back to the, Eliz at least to the Elizabethan times when Queen Elizabeth I had a pack of miniature beagles. Now, although the miniatures have um, died out in this country, still popular in America. Again, workmanlike, clean striding, covering maximum ground with minimum effort in wonderful condition, gleaming with health. And a big entry today for the judge, uh, Mr. Capel. Uh, 244 beagles he had to judge. A beautiful top line, which is often an indicator of good balance between the forehand and the rear. And now the distinctive look of the Bloodhound. This one's a champion, railside Pluto at Quiquatra, and it comes from Buckinghamshire. A black and tan hound, with nobility in the head, clean outline. And we don't see so many of these in the show ring uh, anymore. There are only 18 here. Today, this was judged the best, and he's called uh, Jago. He's a three-year-old dog. And this is a breed which was native to Belgium, where he's sometimes known as the Chien de Saint-Hubert, which is a, one of his ancestral breeds. He was, he was used originally for hunting wild boar in Belgium and France, and later to track human beings. He was therefore seen as a sleuth hound. They're incredibly good at tracking. I can remember being found in the snow by but a bloodhound. Now, how it tracked me, I have no idea. He wanted to get his head to the ground like a real scent hound. He's called the bloodhound not because he tracked um, the scent of blood, but because blood meant he was pedigree, he'd got nobility. He was a, a hound of good blood. This one just looking a bit diffident in the big ring, not getting his tail up. But the, those long ears, which were used to case the scent when he had his head down. And this is the magnificent Borzoi. This is a four year old dog called Sunny, owned by Alma Abrahams from Welling Garden City. This is the most important day in the life of this dog, according to Margaret. I beg your pardon, according to Alma. 
Now, the long limbs of the Russian wolfhound, this long feet to give it pliability and elasticity when it's turning and hunting. It was used for hunting wolves by the aristocracy, built on galloping lines, and with the added attraction of this glamorous coat. And was first presented in Britain, first one seen uh, by the Tsar of all the Russias to Queen Alexandra, and the breed's popularity has caught on since there, but they are magnificent, wonderful movement. We see some features of the greyhound in its outline, this curve over the loin, which gives it powerful driving action, a strong loin, and this long, clean head. When they hunted, they hunted in pairs, taking on the wolves, and one bozo would attack from one side and its partner from the other till they wore down the wolf and then the, the, uh, the horseman came to finish off the wolf. And now the elegance of outline of the Chineco de Letna, relatively new in this country and coming from Italy and, and Sicily where it was a rabbit hound. This one's incredibly young. It's only an eight-month-old bitch called Wagadu, uh, owned by uh, uh, Michael, I think it is, or Michelle Fernley from Exmouth. I think it's Michael or Michaela. Uh, it's probably Michaela when she's out there handling. So we've got it right in the end. This is only uh, the fourth show, so best of breed here. Wow, well, she's terrific. Had, she's had a great day. Now, it's rather similar to the pharaoh hound in miniature. This elegance of head, the large ears, the pliant skin, be beautiful russet chestnut colour here. Just a little diffident on the carpet. Not quite relaxed, but she is, as you say, very young. But these dogs are capable of not only uh, sight hound hunting, they're very good uh, scenting as well. And they've got very sensitive ears, so they can, they can hear game as well. So um, an all-purpose hunting dog. Beautiful colour, very distinctive red. Well, this is the head of one of my favourite breeds. This is the long-haired Dachshund. There were 85 of them here at Crufts today. This is a six-year-old dog called Jack, owned by uh, Cindy Dare from Bedford, and says that this is a very laid-back and loving dog. But Dachshunds, well, they're just wonderful animals. Six different varieties. We're seeing the first of them here, the long hair. Now, the Dachshund, a native of Germany, where it's known as the Tekel, or Badger Dog, and it was used for tracking both badger and rabbits, so they had to be athletic and cover the ground, and then actually be able to go to ground, so that they have to be fairly low to ground, but have good ground clearance. This, the long-haired variety, the coat shouldn't be overdone, they have to be retain their workmanlike abilities, so not too much glamour about them, above all, fairly long, low, and level. I mean, they're de de defined as a small dog, but in fact, they're sort of a medium-sized dog with short legs, aren't they, which would be fair. And should have strong bone. As we say, there are six different varieties, and we'll see them all. Now, that's the long hair going to go around again. In a moment, we'll see the miniature long hair. And then the, the standard, the same all the way through all the breeds. A well-developed chest strong bone and feet and a lovely conical, conical shaped head. And there, in min the miniature version, the miniature long haired. Now this is a young dog that's won today, not yet nine months of age, so he's had a great victory in the breed. Come from uh, Norwich in Norfolk. As uh, Frank said, just a young dog, eight months old, called Robin. Owner is Roy Wood, and uh, so it's just a very playful puppy. But the, the, these dogs, are, they're very brave, they're very bright, they're very intelligent, but they 
are very difficult to train. They don't do as they're told. Very nice movement. However, the, all of the Dachshunds have the same standard. It's only the size or the coat which differentiates them. All of the miniatures are preferably uh, under five kilograms, under 11 pounds. At some shows they're weighed, but they're not at Crufts. So it's the, the challenge is to get the same type and quality in smaller stature. This one's just a little bit ill at ease. It's a new dog. A big ring like Crufts is a, a new experience for him. Well, here we have the first of the smooths. This is the standard smooth Dachshund. The miniature will follow as well. Two-year-old bitch called Scarlet, owned by Dr. T. Jackal, who comes from Hampshire in the UK. There were 100 of these here today. And actually, our, our judge, Dr. Dr. Yakel, is from Hungary. So we've had a, a continental judge where the Dachshunds are a little bit different with higher legs and, higher and more ground clearance. This, the smooth coat, the elastic skin, which gives them protection when working. Nothing to hide on a smooth coat. There's no, no long hair. You can see the lines and the construction at a glance. And I should have said that it was owned by Mr. Brian Wand and Mrs. Victoria Wand, my mistake there. Yes. I think they have such character, Daxons, and I, I live with uh, four of them. It, it, the standard says bold to the point of rashness. Since they had to face badgers and a, another game, they had to be courageous. And this one, full of confidence, which is nice to see. Very powerful jaws. As you say, they used to have to face on to badgers. No longer is the case, but uh, that's what their function was. And standing four square, full of confidence. That's a nice show this standard smooth put on. The almond-shaped eye, dark eyes and lovely expression. And there's the miniature smooth head. Garthorne Miss Toffee, she's called, four-year-old. Had a good victory today, good entry for Sue Urgis, a famous breeder. A very smart outline and strong chest. Yes, the owner, Mrs. Gallo, says that Toffee has a cheeky personality loves playing with her toys, has a loving nature, and is very much part of the family. And that's what I must say I find about them as well. Uh, they, they are delightful animals to live with, but uh, they're not very responsive to training, at least not, uh, not when they're young. <laughs> but a very nice, clean action coming towards us. These parallel front legs moving cleanly, holding a good top line, an indicator of good construction and balance. Very confident, just lifting her tail nicely to show she's happy. Nice deep chest as well. And they have to be ribbed well back. It's important that you have a long rib cage. If you get long in the loin, you sometimes get disc problems and a poor top line. So they have to be ribbed well back. Great character. Second year running for best of breed for this particular dog, champion Silve Solo, three and a half year old bitch known as Kitty. And this is the standard wire haired Dachshund. You see the wonderful crisp texture of the top coat there. They've got an undercoat as well for extra protection. This one is a big winner. She was actually second in the group at Crufts last year. Top winner in the breed for a lot of years now. Uh, the Silve Kennel goes back to the, first, the Second World War in the 1940s. And this lady has carried on the kennel. So it's a, got a rich tradition of success and breeding wonderful Dachshunds. This is uh, Kim McAlmont, I think. Now, you own the standard wires, Peter, and you can testify to what great characters they are. I think they're fabulous. And I absolutely love them. This little beard and those eyebrows give it extra character. Well, the character does show in the face, and I, I just love the, the, the whiskers, the eyebrows, and this is a very nice pin wire brindle. And, and again, this wonderful top line, firm and hard. It looks extra fit, this dog. This 
Give it a good shake. There we go, Kitty. And finally, the miniature wirehead. This is champion Ryden and Flight Ricardo. Four-year-old dog, big winner for owner Steve Rose, who's handling here. He's from Wales. Beautiful outline and balance in great coat. And I have to say, I've just bought one of these as well, a miniature. And uh, we're looking at a good one here. It was best of breed at Crufts also in 2015. Uh, best in show winner at Daxon Club shows, the specialty shows. They have superb temperaments and uh, they like people immensely. They're, they're very, very good with people. Nice movement there as well. Very steady. Four years and just nearly four and a half, this little dog. And again, it's a, a picture of balance and an excellent coat. Striding forwards there well. There are 113 of them here today. The, the, the Dachshund's actually the largest breed numerically because there are six varieties on And very happy in the ring here. Carrying himself well. Deportment very important to show themselves off well. Holding its outline. Interested in everything. Intelligent little little face. I was watching some of the uh, deer hounds being judged uh, in the ring this morning. This is Govey, who's a three-year-old uh, bitch owned by Sue and Tony Phillips from Louth in Lincolnshire. And they have, as I said uh, earlier, to, as they came into the ring, this incredible, lovely loping walk. The beautiful elegance and gentle expression of the deer hound. Lovely lines, the rise over the loin to give it propulsive power when galloping. A crisp, ragged coat. They should look natural. And again, this lightness of foot when it moves. Wonderful breed to live with. Although they're game and can hunt, they're also gentle creatures in the house. I'm very pleased to see this one here, I, because uh, modesty forbids it had its first big win under, under myself. And then I was no. delighted to see it win Best of Breed at the Hound Show, the most prestigious show for, um, for the hounds. So good form, still relatively young bitch, beautiful quality and going well there. They have this uh, incredibly quiet approach to people as well. They, they can sneak up behind you and you never know. But great courses and they were very good at their job. Originally used for hunting wolves and as... And now onto the Finnish Spitz, the national dog of Finland with its iridescent red coat and Spitz-like characteristics. This is a dog that's come here from Finland to take part. Its uh, pet name is Shioma, and he's a two-year-old, two years and ten-month-old dog, so almost three there. And uh, this is perhaps the noisiest breed amongst the hounds because they were they were supposed to bark when they found game. Originally, they were used for tracking elk and bear, and later birds. And it was their barking which attracted the hunters to the game. We see this wonderful texture to the coat there. Bright, iridescent red. Rather a sensitive breed as well. Spitz-like, which means it's got a triangular-shaped head, neatly pricked ears, and a tail curved over its back. And a crisp, weatherproof coat. And this is a breed where the dogs are significantly taller than the bitches. So we're looking at the foxhound, not a dog that we see a great number of in the uh, show ring. There are only five here taking part today. This is a two-year-old dog called Chorister. Now, the English foxhound was traditionally a pack hound and followed by horses. 
However, only in the last 20 years or so we've seen them in the show rings. They're longer established in America and Australia. Many of the packs in England had distinctive breed type, either colour or coat. But we have this standardised stand, breed standard. They should be athletic, quite strong in the head, and above all, fit and good moving. When the uh, fox hunting was outlawed, some of the breeders in England managed to obtain some pack hounds to add to the gene pool. And this lady here uh, was instrumental in getting some pack hound blood into the show hounds. I think they're most attractive. It'd be nice to see more of them in the show ring. But, uh, Now to the Greyhound, there's nothing to hide on that clean, flowing outline. A dog of curves, symmetry and elegance. Now, see, wonderful clean neck, arch over the loin and a head like a snake. It's this clean length and strength. This is a young uh, bitch, 17 months old, called Kiki, and uh, owned by uh, Mrs. Bitter Arons Primavera and Mr. I can't say it's Pier Luigi Primavera. Yes, of course, I come from Italy, and uh, the regular visitors here to Crufts. It's thought that the greyhound is the prototype for many of the sighthounds, and we see that that shape, the outline with the arch over the loin, in many of the sighthounds. It's athletic and curvy beautifully gentle in its nature despite its hunting instinct and a pleasure to live with they make wonderful family pets and they come in all sorts of colors this is a red fawn pliant skin beautiful touch and coat and this clean action Well, this is the Hamilton Stavari or Stervera, and it comes uh, to the show today from Lincolnshire with Mrs. Angela Lee. This is a six year old bitch called Rose, and of course, like the British foxhound, this is the Swedish foxhound. Completely workmanlike and unexaggerated, only comes in this tricolour this black tan and this white markings. This is a breed which doesn't work in packs, it works singly. It was, gets its name from Count Hamilton who developed the breed when it was uh, nearly extinct. Went round um, Sweden and found examples and improved the gene pool. Unlike many of the hounds, it shouldn't lift its tail above its back. The tail carriage is relatively low, level with the back. It's got an interesting two-layered coat as well, short, close undercoat, soft and very thick during the winter. And just settling to its job there, just gaining a bit more confidence there as it goes. Now the long-legged Ibethan hound. Uh, Distinctive in its conformation, elegance in its head, in these large ears. They come in rough coated and smooth, and distinctive in many features. This is a two year old dog called uh, Bandit. It's come from Norway. Typical Mediterranean hound, this one, tall ears, has. You've probably seen depicted on Egyptian tombs and pottery for, well, forever, and literally. And Not although it was developed in Ibiza and Formentera, the neighbouring island, it, it was this isolation of the islands that kept it very pure and distinct and very even in type. Now, in many breeds, we want a, a long layback in the shoulder and a deep chest. Not so with the Ibethan here. They've got a shallow chest and this slight hovering gait as it moves, which is illustrated perfectly here. This distinctive head and large ears. That's a very nice example of breed type with this one. Uh, 
And now we come to the extraordinarily lovely Irish wolfhound, the tallest, biggest of all the hounds, very massive, well-balanced throughout. This is a breed that almost died out in the 1800s due to there being no wolves left to kill there. A combination of strength and athleticism. It's um, strong in the body, strong in the bone, but light in its gait. It should be built on curvy lines. There should be nothing straight about it, a flowing outline, a rise over the loin. This one comes from a very successful kennel in Italy, who won both dog and bitch championships today. And this, in fact, is a six-year-old dog called Donahol. As you say, they come from uh, Sant'Alessio in Italy. And despite their size, they're gentle giants, wonderful in the house, wonderful with people. One of the great um, trials of the giant breeds is to get size with soundness of movement. So this is going very well here. Moving beautifully. Now the elk hound, this distinctive grey coat with harness markings. Again, it's a spitz breed. It's a triangular head. He's sharply pricked ears, very alert, looking at its owner, and very happy to see its owner with its tit bits. <laughs> this. It's actually a three-year-old bitch called Inga, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Middleton from Burnley in Lancashire. Uh, this dog's had seven CCs, five reserves, top-winning elk hound in 2016 as well. Completely functional. It's um, not so heavily built. It's light and athletic and a weatherproof coat. And this tail curved high over the back. See the harness markings over its shoulders? A distinctive breed feature in the coat pattern. They are another breed which are quite noisy. They were trained to bark when they found elk and working deep in the forest, they brought the hunters to the game. And the movement there showing considerable agility and endurance. It's a very effortless sort of stride that they have. The back staying nice and level. This is another of our very vulnerable breeds, the Otter Hound. This is a three years, 11 month old dog called Mercury, and it's come from Lincoln with Nick and Sue Bunker. Most important wins to date, today. Now this was a breed which was threatened with extinction when Otter ha Otter hunting was banned in 1978, and only a, f a few devo devotees of the breed got together and uh, got the breed together, got a few hounds from the packs which were being um, disbanded to help the gene pool. But it's still a very small gene pool, I think, isn't it? They're extraordinary dogs. They, they can follow uh, uh, a, a, a scent on land, which is called a drag, and in water it's a wash and the drag they can follow for up to 12 hours and they can swim following a, a wash for about five hours they are it, quite it, extraordinary it's thought that the breed was developed with a combination of french hounds and english hounds they've certainly got some of the nobility in the head of the french hounds and talk about fit for function they had to work in water these have markedly webbed feet to help them in their work Coat's quite oily and a bit odiferous, if I dare say that. <laughs> a bit you mean they smell a bit? <laughs> Don't be unkind. <laughs> and now we have the pharaoh hound. Beautiful in its outline. Going back to the Egyptian tombs, you can see outlines like this on the tombs of the pharaohs, which is where it gets its name from. Of course, not a native of uh, Egypt, it's a native of Malta. This one is a two-year-old dog called Ollie, comes from Cone in Lancashire with Glyn and Christine Dawson. Uh, is very happy and playful, likes to show off. The colour really is one of the more distinctive elements uh, of the breed and uh, the ears, wonderfully erect. And 
It's thought that they were taken to Egypt by the Phoenician sailors who were traders in dogs and were responsible for spreading a lot of breeds throughout Europe. However, they became so popular in Egyptian culture that they were much valued and in, indeed there have been mummified pharaoh hounds found in the tombs of the pharaohs. That's how valued they were. And this is the Portuguese Podengo. He's called Tom, he's a two-year-old dog and he comes from Yorkshire with Angela Pedder and uh, Norma Watts to take part in the competition here. It's a national breed of Portugal and they come in three sizes, small, medium and large. Now this little rabbit hunter comes in two coats. It's the smooth coated or the wire or rough coated one. There are three sizes. We only see mostly the smaller ones in this country. They come in a much taller variety. However, apart from their great skill in rabbit hunting, they make fantastic companions. They're full of character. Extraordinarily, they're, they're supposed to be a descendant of the pharaoh hand that we've just seen, but I don't actually see it. <laughs> uh, perhaps a little bit in the head shape in a miniaturized version. Again, a rectangular in body shape. Smart action. Oh, the noble head of the Rhodesian Ridgeback. This is a breed which was developed in uh, Rhodesia, now known as Zimbabwe, as a lion hunter. This uh, had to be courageous, athletic and strong. Only 34 of them here at Crufts this year, three years old, this uh, one called Gula. Now, it, the Rhodesian Ridgeback takes its name from a ridge of hair which runs in the reverse direction along the spine and two crowns of hair over the withers. We can just see there the shape of the ridge along the back line. And it was sort of canine legend that the the well-ridged dogs were the best and most courageous of hunters. A bit of uh, romanticism there, I think. They come in this red Wheaton colour. They have to be athletic, not over cumbersome in their body, and a lot of courage. They tracked the lions and held them at bay until the, the hunters came. And that distinctive little flash of white they have on the chest there, and with the eye colour always blending in with the coat colour which is interesting. Nice head, isn't it? So, athletic dog, nice size, in lovely condition. Well, this is a six-year-old dog called Dexter. He's a Saluki, and he belongs to Alan and Janet Glaster from Carlisle up in Cumbria. And the Saluki has one of the most elegant movements, I think, that one could hope to see in a ring. This is an elegant sighthound from the Middle East, and it's thought that it takes its name from the Arabian town of Saluk or the Syrian town of Saluka. Now, this light lifting gate, they were much prized by the Bedouins, um, along with their Arabian horses. The hunting skills and the beauty of the dogs, much valued. Often carried on horseback until the sight of game. They often were used with hooded falcons when hunting, which is uh, spectacular to see, and that still is carried on. This one a big winner, it's a best in show winner and a breed record holder, the most successful dog in the history of the breed. With 41 cc's, fantastic. This is a breed I'm not really familiar with. We see it each year, but there aren't many of them uh, here at the show, just 11. This is the Slugi. He's called Gus. He's two years, 10 months old, and he belongs to Mrs. Lisa Smith and Miss Tina Hunter from St. Leonard's on Sea. Now, although he has got a name similar to the Saluki, which we've just seen, this is quite a different breed. This comes from Northern Africa. And uh, 
He was uh, used as a sight hound, as a hunting hound. The desert type are light, more light in their build. The mountain type a bit heavier. They were brought into Europe, it's thought, with the French, um, when the French occupied Algeria. They were taken into Europe then. Now, they are a lean breed. We can see the ribs showing slightly there. This is because it's a breed feature. They carry no subcutaneous fat, so they, there's no fat covering their, their ribs. Very healthy, it's a breed feature. Leanness and athleticism. Now, the victor of over 390 whippets today, this lovely brindle whippet bitch. Kaluni Tartan Tease, she's called it a, a big winning champion already. An elegance of outline. Now, we see the clean daisy cutting action of this whippet. It's thought that the breed was developed in the northeast by miners who bred them from small greyhounds and used them for rabbit coursing to bring home the supper. And just 20 months old, this bitch called Tease comes from Edinburgh in Scotland. Very laid back dog, they say, a lovable dog, the most lovable dog we've ever had. So there we have Graham Hill. He's seen all of the hounds, all the best of breeds of the almost 3,000 hounds that were here. So what is he going to pick from this for his shortlist? Now he's uh, our Judge Graham Hill going round to remind himself of what he found with his hands on examination in the anatomy of the dogs, the condition of the dogs. He's had his hands on, he's got that big advantage over us. So it's easy for us to judge them in a, a sort of beauty contest sort of way from here, but until you've had your hands on them, as you know, Frank, you've been in there, you've, you know what it is to judge. And, and of you've course, got to get your hands he's there. looking for dogs which are fit for function, fit for the function for which they were originally bred. That's very important in all of these working breeds. The elegance of outline of that greyhound. This is an important time for a judge to, he's got to whittle them down to about eight dogs. That's a hard task, so you need to take your time and think, which are the best eight dogs here for me? So as we saw with the terriers, uh, this was not possible because uh, our judge there selected 10 for his shortlist and we may get the same here very difficult task. You'll have a pretty good idea of what he wants to pick, but he's just making sure. So yeah, he's the, moving over. In, the Basenji is called so forward. The is coming out. The Grand Basset Griffin Von Deed and the Petit, both, both of them. The Beagle comes in. The standard smooth Dachshund. And the Deerhound, the very nice Deerhound. And the, the Irish Wolfhound from Italy. The Saluki, big winning Saluki, and the Whippet. And that's a very nice lineup for Graham Hill. And it looks like he's picked 10 as well there. So let's uh, take a look back along the line there. There's the Petit Basset, Griffin Vendion. There's our Beagle. There's the standard uh, Dachshund. There's the Deerhound, Deer the, the Saluki, and the Whippet. Now, I think uh, the handlers will just be getting a little bit of tingling of nerves here before they go out for their last up and down. What the judge is looking for here is accuracy of movement. They drive, strong hocks driving away from him, and this clean front action, the legs remaining fairly parallel as they come towards you. Again, a lovely swinging stride, excellent top line, a lovely tight little um, twist to the tail here and in gleaming condition. You can see the pliant elasticity of that skin. Lovely quality. And next we're going to see the uh, Grand Basset on the move again. Again, the 
generous lines and noble head of the Grand Basset. Jessica's breed, of course, and from a famous kennel in the Netherlands. And here, of course, now the smaller version, the pretty Basset Griffin Bondion. Again, it, this dog's mother was best in show at Crufts. Can he emulate her and win this hound group here? We'll see. Only a young dog. And now we come to the Beagle. Very handsome, very accurate in its movement. Lovely parallel lines coming towards us. Strong driving and lovely carriage of the tail. Workmanlike, fit for function and full of quality. That essential feature in a top show dog. So here we have the smooth haired Dachshund. So the only one of the six to get selected into the short And I like this on the move. It's full of confidence and a very good mover and very nice proportions. And now the deer hound. This, this has a special place for me. It's a beautiful, beautiful bitch. A beautiful lines. And this light, lightness of action, holding its outline well. The Irish Wolfhound. Strength with athleticism. Noble dog. There's two more to move. Here's the Saluki. This is a big winner. Putting on a good show. Light lift to its action. Lovely carriage. And finally, the Whippets. This lovely young Brindle and White Whippet female. It's a breed which is beautiful to live with. Cleanness, a daisy cutting action. No lift to its action here. Well, you said this is a splendid collection for Graham Hill to have made. Uh, I don't know what you fancy. Frank, but uh, as we say, you, we haven't had our hands on them, so we couldn't really make a decision. But it's a lovely selection well, to look at. My word. Where's he going? Where's he going? He's going straight it's over the, it's to the Grand Basse Griffin. Ben. It's the Grand has won from it the is. Netherlands. There you are. A very good show. Gwen looking very happy. There she is, uh, in disbelief there. In second place, <laughs> it's the Whippet. For the Whippet in second. Very elegant picture, That's owner tease. and handler. Yes, 20 months Very old. Very happy there. Again, the from Italy, the Irish Wolfhound. We like this one in the ring, didn't we? And for fourth spot, the Beagle. The Beagle. But there we are, there we are. The smart beagle takes fourth spot in this hound group. But it's a victory from the Netherlands. The grand with his grand, yes, this two year old Frosty. Phil Reed from Oxford and Gwen Hoekshaven from the Netherlands will be thrilled to bits with this. And I should think Jess will be as well. The Grand Basset Griffin Fondion, number 2693 in our catalogues here, has taken the Hound Group here at Crufts 2017.